Hi, my name is Paulina and this is a day in my life. Hi everyone, welcome to All Things Iceland, the place to get the inside scoop on Icelandic nature, culture, history, and language. And we are diving deep into Icelandic nature and culture today. As you heard Paulina say, it's a day in her life here on a farm, specifically dealing with Icelandic sheep. And it's lambing season now, which means that lots of adorable lambs are being born. So FYI, even though we're not seeing any births today, there will be some ewes that you see who have given birth recently, so there might be some blood, just to let you know. Uh, and also, this just to give you a snippet inside of what it's like for her on the farm. And on Instagram, she shows, as Farm Life Iceland, tons of pictures and videos about the different adorable sheep and lamb and rams here on the farm so if you want to check that out in the description box below is her handle i'm super excited to kind of give you this kind of insight so i hope you enjoy and if you do definitely make sure to give the video a thumbs up and to share it with other people that you think would enjoy it as well i arrived at paulina's farm at 8 45 in the morning and she was finishing her breakfast and at nine o'clock sharp we were in the barn where you can see all the hungry sheep are waiting for their first meal of the day. The morning routine is a lot easier today than it was a week ago because a week ago the sheep house was completely full. Now it's not as full of as you can see, there's very few sheep here. And as well, they were giving birth all the time, so we had to constantly be taking care of that as well and make sure everything was going smooth and, you know, put them in a private barn like this when they were giving birth and then move, move them to the one that they would stay for a few days. So, yeah. But the morning routine is just take everyone that gave birth the night before and put them somewhere where they can stay and then make sure there's enough space to feed all of these that haven't given birth yet and then feed them and the feeding was a lot more when there were more sheep to be fed and then make sure everyone has water and then do that again because they drink it all and we have to do that all like nothing is automatic which would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice if, if it would just fill up as they drink. But we don't have that. Now he found it. I thought about a pet in man. This is obviously the best. Yeah. If they learn. They can latch on. Yeah. But they're just so small and this is so big, so. Yeah, it's flat, so it's here. And here they actually stunk on me. So that's a normal thing too for them to like. Yeah, oh, she's a big Ooh. character. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. It's kind of big. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. It's too big for them because they're so small. Show it, Roger. Show it, I'm in.
lost their mother uh, yesterday, so we thought we would have to take care of them and bottle feed them all summer. But then Botna started giving birth, and Botna is one of my best sheep. She was a pet lamb. And she only had one ram. This one. And it was difficult to get him out, and he was very lifeless at first. So we decided to give Botna the other ones as well, in case he died. And also it's just better for them to have a mother, and Botna is great. And she immediately just wanted them. And just started doing this sound that mothers do. So now she has three, and it's all going very well. Except for, I need to feed him, I think. I think he's hungry, but once he gets his strength, he'll be bigger than his big sisters. So everything will be good, I think. Hi. Is it normal for uh, you, you to adopt? Well, yeah. It's not, it doesn't happen like every day or something like that, but it happens. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But it's always worth a shot if a lamb needs a mother. Hi. And you can see she's already protecting them. Like, she trusts me, but she's still like checking. Oh, you have her. Yeah. There's the lion skin. Yeah. Yeah. This big ram is his brother. Ah. The one that Botna had last year. And as you can see, he's very friendly. And for him, this it's, is from last year. Yeah. Wow. And for him being so friendly, it's genetic. He's been like this from the moment he was born, and he never stopped. And I'm hoping this one will be too. Because Botna's mom was like this too. Hi. Give her milk. Yeah. I give her milk. Yeah. <laughs> little man. She's your little brother. Botna, is your little brother? Nah. Not that interested. They're both a hot and your brother. And typically, as you would find on other farms, there's an adorable dog who is nice and friendly. After more than three hours of Paulina doing various tasks in the barn non-stop. She and her family invited me for lunch at noon, which was lovely. I then sat down with Paulina to talk about how it's been during lambing season, how she sees herself in terms of farming in the future, and a bit about the historic house that they're living in. This is like the second day where I'm able to come inside and just lay down and do nothing and it's so nice because for like a week lamping was so hectic that we never we never stayed in the house we just took turns going in ate went right back outside and then someone else could go go and eat when you got back because somebody had to be in the sheep house like all the time because of births yeah because they were just giving births constantly and there's always someone to watch out for you know you don't really leave them if the birth has started because you have to be there in case they need help um yeah so nobody oh well, we always had to have somebody down there so we had to yeah, take turns eating and sleeping as well during the night and it just feels really nice to lay down and do nothing there's always a lot of like minor things that we have to do that it's no big deal, you know. The lambs are supposed to come out like this, front legs and the head between, and that's a normal birth. But it's very common that it's only the head that comes or the head and one leg, and then you just have to fish out the other leg. And that's pretty easy, but you have to do it. You have to be there to do it um, because it's difficult and dangerous for the lamb if it if it's just the head and the ewe keeps pushing and if nobody helps her it's going to take a long time and then the lamb could die um so yeah but and sometimes they come backwards and then you absolutely must pull them out because otherwise they die and there have been two proper difficult birds where just um Many people had tried to help them, and one of them was in the middle of the night, so they woke me up and I finally managed to get the lambs out, but it was just really difficult. But they were both dead, so that was sad too. But um, overall it's been a good lambing season. Only two major difficulties, and a lot of these things that we just help them with, and then it's fine. But we don't risk not being there because we, I mean, it's the worst feeling during lamping if a lamb dies 
because you had another cup of coffee or because you were too lazy to get up when you were supposed to get up, you know? Yeah. So we don't, we don't risk it. So how long have you been participating in helping ewes to birth lambs? Uh, all my life. Like I grew up doing this and I was in the sheep house before I could walk. And, you know, as I grew, I just got to do things that I could handle. So gradually, mm -hmm. through my childhood, I got bigger responsibilities. So I, I, don't, you know, I mean, I, I can't remember a different life. I've never had a different life. This has always been what I do. And are you planning to take over? Like, you know, obviously uh, people get older, can't maybe can't do it anymore or something like that. Um, no, not, not full time. I don't think I want to be a full-time farmer, but at the same time, I want to have, you know, the best of both worlds sort of thing. Like I want to be able to come here, have a few sheep, maybe not a full farm, unless I find someone to do that for us. Um, but we, we have to figure that out, you know, what's the next step for the farm? Yeah, so this part of the house is the part that my parents built where they live and in here is the old house that they have slowly been renovating. My great-grandparents built this. I think it was in 1918 and yeah, it's nice. My grandfather was born in that room and the family has been here for seven or eight generations. Mm. And this is what the house used to look like. We had a fios for the cows here and the barn. And that was in 1935. Yeah. And now my grandmother lives in that part of the house. She's 95. And my aunt and my uncle. So it's like a very long house. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they, this, she spent, um, well, she's just family. Um, she spent every summer here um, as a child, from Rietir to, no, from, from Lamping to Rietir, so like almost half the year. And I think she slept under this window. I think she wants to set that, so. So her parents do live there, but they have full-time jobs doing other things. They are not farmers. And of course they help out, but it's just really fascinating balancing full-time doing something else and living on a farm. After lunch and a walk through the house, Paulina and I headed straight back to the barn because there was a lot more work to do, including the second feeding of the sheep and the lamb. And you will see that briefly in the clips, her mom joins us to help feed. Her mom has been living here her whole life. And there's a lot more things that happen in the afternoon work-wise that she had to do because there's just constantly a lot going on. this sound like sort of not a happy mare we have to see you know what's up with that one is it usually they're just trying to poop and they find it difficult or painful but sometimes it means that they aren't feeding or that you know something is wrong and then we have to fix that he's complaining a lot he's a big character i think but i think he's a bit hungry but i don't want to feed him because i want him to figure out how he does this himself and I hope we'll soon figure that out. But now I can on my back. He's been complaining his whole life. It's not like a day old or something. Or a few days old. <laughs> yeah, he was born last night. It's mostly me and my uncles. Mm -hmm. And my aunt as well. She does a lot. But she's a teacher, so she can't be here like all the time. Yeah. And she has to sleep the night before she's teaching. Although she doesn't always do that. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we had August for two weeks, and that just saved us. I don't know how it would be. If, like I'm already exhausted, but if he hadn't been here, yeah, no. but if he hadn't been here, 
I don't know, I'd be dead. And then Maria, my girlfriend, she was here for 10 days, I think. And that also obviously helped a lot. So we've been able to share the workload a lot. More than ever before, I think. Here, Paulina and her brother are injecting the lambs with minerals that are supposed to help protect them when they finally go out in the summertime to graze in the highlands so that they don't get sick. He's a trained doctor, so the lambs are very lucky. <laughs> they don't seem to mind it very much. No? It's just it's a, a little it's sting. It's a big needle. Yeah, exactly. I would, I would mind. Yeah, I'd be like, um, <laughs> how about no, guys? So there's obviously like a variety of things to do. Yeah. yeah, a lot. And you know, you, you always see something like that you have to attend to. What do you feel like is the hardest thing about doing this? The, the thing that it's constant. Like if you did this for eight hours, you'd be absolutely fine. Well, you would probably be tired. But doing this 16 hours a day for, I don't know, 20 days straight is a bit much. But I think it's sort of like what women go through during childbirth. I mean, it's difficult, it's painful, and you're like, oh, I'll never do this again. And then you have the kid, and you're like, oh, I could do it all over again. And I feel the same with lambing, although I've never had a kid, so I don't know if it's a good, good way of explaining it. But, you know, I'm exhausted, but as soon as it's over, I'll be looking forward to next year, because it's my favorite season. So. Is it hard when you have to let them go out into the highlands or the... No, it's just, we just feel happy for them because they're so excited. Like when the, when the grown ewes go on the, the wagon to the highlands, because you have to drive them there, the lambs can't walk that far. Um, they know exactly what's happening and they're really excited to be there because obviously who wouldn't? Can you help out with getting the hay or do they get the hay and then Well if I'm home and if they need help I help, but otherwise not. Yeah. And I mean, it's not exactly what I love the most during, you know, warm su summer days to sit in a tractor and drive it in circles. I mean, I'd rather be outside, but I mean, if they need help, of course I help. And it, if, if you have one on the baling machine, one on the wrapping machine, and one on the machine that, you know, makes the hay in a pile, so the bale machine can eat it. If you have one on each, you're much quicker. So. And how much hay do they normally collect? <sighs> Hundreds of bales. I'm not sure how many they try to get, but a lot. Yeah, and then the cows need a lot of hay too. So, yeah.
Once the ewes have given birth and their lambs are pretty healthy, they are then set out. They're taken out of the barn to graze in different areas of the farm, which is quite vast. In fact, you have to drive some of the lambs and sheep to certain areas. And then after that, when everyone's pretty much done with lambing season, the sheep and lambs are gathered up to take to the highlands so they can graze freely throughout the summer. So we're basically at the end of the day, which yes. has been quite a day, not as crazy as some of the other days you've had. No, this is the most chill day for me for a while, nice. so that's good. And you saw all the work she was doing, so imagine that times, I don't know, 100 or something going on. Something like that. Yeah, but thank you so much to you and your family for allowing me to come and show everybody a yeah. little glimpse into your life. Yeah, I'm so happy to share it. Yeah, and her Instagram, like I mentioned, Farm Life Iceland. She has tons of videos and adorable photos. Yes. So go and check her out. Link is in the description box. As always, if you enjoyed this, make sure that you subscribe and like this video, share it with people that you think would find it interesting. And I will see you in the next video.